In electrical engineering, we are often interested in communicating or transferring energy from one point to another. To do this requires interconnection of devices. This interconnection is called electrical circuit. Let's take an example. We have a bulb over here and a battery. The bulb is connected to the battery through connecting wires. So the positive terminal of the bulb is connected to the positive terminal of the battery and negative terminal of the bulb is connected to the negative terminal of the battery. This forms an electrical circuit and also it justifies our statement over here. Now this will be our building block for future circuits. We will take certain small components and combine them to form some amazing and complicated circuits. In this course, our goal is to not only make circuits, but also to analyze them. We need to understand the actual behavior of the circuits. As electrical engineers, we deal with measurement of quantities. Now, our measurement should be communicated in a common language so that everybody in the world can understand it. There is an international measurement language called International System of Units or SI units. Let me just write it for you. So we have SI units. In this system, broadly, there are seven basic measurement units and all other quantities are measured in terms of these basic units. Let me show you in a table of format. So, so the seven basic units are length, which is measured in meter, mass, which is measured in kilogram, or in short, you can write kg. Time is measured in seconds. Charge is measured in coulomb. Current is measured in amperes. Luminous intensity is measured in candela or in short, you can write CD. Temperature is measured in Kelvin or in short, you can write K. One great advantage of SI units is that it uses prefixes based on the power of 10 to relate larger or smaller quantities to these basic units. For example, let's say length. So the basic unit of length is meter. But if we say 1000 meter, you can denote it by one kilometer. And let's say we have 100 centimeter. So you can denote 100 centimeter by one meter. See that how we have represented larger as well as smaller quantities in terms of the basic unit of length, which is meter. All right, now we have some insight about SI units. Let's talk about charge and current in the next lecture.